Hi, my name is Frank Schaefer. I grew up in the religious right, fled for my own sanity, and to recover some moral shred of decency almost 40 years ago now. But I watched the movement with great care because I have family and friends from the past who are still very much involved. It's with shock that I continue to note that no matter how far Donald Trump falls, his MAGA crowd, made up mostly of white evangelical Christian nationalists, stick with him. You're going to think I'm being facetious now and joking or making light of things that one should be serious about, but I'm not. Things have gone so far that there is nothing that one can say about this that is too extreme to actually be less extreme than the truth. You know, when you have a room full of people in New Hampshire who gather to laugh and mock and join with someone accused of sexual assault found by a jury to have carried out the assault, who's now liable for $5 million for having grabbed a woman, shoved her against a wall, reached under her clothing, stuck his fingers into her vagina in a way that injured her, and then gathers a room full of Republican evangelical Christian voters to mock that woman's pain, you have arrived at the point where Donald Trump once said I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and no one would care, I would get away with it. His defense that, well, this is what all billionaires do, and him making light of this as if somehow assaulting women is normal, confronts the evangelical family values crowd with a new low. The people who mocked her in that room with him, laughing at his witticisms about sexual assault, are themselves assaultists. They are aiding and abating a rape culture, which includes young men in this country that hate women, some of whom have shot at them and driven cars over them. It makes common cause with the Proud Boys who stormed into the Capitol building, trashed it, beat policemen. It makes common cause with the people who, just a few generations ago, were lynching Black men and women, hanging them off bridges and from trees. It is part of the underbelly, the shame and horror that is part of American history, often ignored by right-wing Christian nationalists as somehow we don't talk about it, it will go away. I'm 70 years old. I grew up in the religious right. I've seen it move from a movement where the interest was in converting people to fundamentalist evangelical Christianity so they would follow Christ, change their lives, to a place where now it is butting up against not only Christian nationalism, not only fascism, but a crude loss of all human value. That really boggles my mind as a father and grandfather sending off my grandchildren into this world, into this callous moonscape devoid of values. There is no way to reach the evangelical movement now. It is too far gone. If Donald Trump gathered a group of MAGA followers in a room and brought a young woman in and asked them to hold her down while he violated her, they would do it. Too much for you? Would you please explain the difference between what he's done and that? This is the movement that made a hero out of someone who took an automatic weapon and gunned people down in a demonstration and then put them on Fox News and said that that was okay. This is a movement that keeps guns on our streets so children are shot to death routinely every other day or so in this country, where death by gun is now the single leading cause of death of children in America, having surpassed cancer and car accidents. If Donald Trump appeared at a MAGA rally and looked into the crowd at, say, a young gay man or woman 
or trans activists there, perhaps protesting his presence, and asked his evangelical white Christian followers to find a rope and hang that young person from a ladder. And they went along with it. Would any of the Republican leaders stand up and say anything? Well, they haven't so far about anything he's done, leading an insurrection against our government, fomenting a riot in which policemen were assaulted and killed, launching mass murder by gun across the country by standing up with the NRA and the gun lobby, no matter what happens to innocent civilians. There is nothing that Donald Trump and his followers could do that could be more extreme than what he's already done. If he took an AR-15 and asked his followers to bring children into the audience so he could personally shoot them, would the Republican leaders then denounce him? They would not. There's not one thing you and I can think of that Donald Trump could do that would make his cult-like MAGA followers denounce him. These people are fascists to the core. It is not that they are sane people embracing QAnon conspiracies and lies. They themselves are now past the point of no return. In the next series of election cycles in 2024 and beyond, these same people are trying to take over school boards, local governments, state houses, and Republican leaders are doing nothing to stop them. There are election officials now suffering from PTSD who spent lives, often as unpaid local volunteer officials, both Republican and Democrats, trying to run our election systems out of firehouses and schools and gymnasiums where we would go to vote. They're now too afraid to go to work or be part of the system. If Donald Trump asked that these people be dragged in stripped naked in the street and beaten to death by his followers, and that happened, would any Republican leaders stand up in the House or the Senate and denounce him? We know they would not, because worse has already happened. We are now past the point of no return. The Republican Party must not be defeated in the next series of elections. It must be destroyed in the same way that the United States along with our allies, destroyed the axis of Mussolini, the Germans, in the same way that now Zelensky and the Ukrainians are standing against Putin's invasion. It is not a question of pushing back. It is a question of understanding that it's them or us. And us is every decent American, black, white, male, female, trans. It doesn't matter. What unites us is that we believe there are moral lines. We believe there are lines you cannot cross. Mocking a woman who's been sexually assaulted by anyone is that line. Mocking her by the man who assaulted her and was found guilty by a jury and made to pay damages for sticking his finger into her vagina and injuring her physically and damaging her entire life has crossed a line after which there is no return. There is no way back. The people who did this are mindless. The leaders in the Senate and in the House who have not stood up and denounced the MAGA movement, root and branch, are mindless. They are driving our country toward cataclysm. We cannot abide this for another moment. A line has been crossed. There is no way back except to go forward through the next election cycles that they will deny, for they no longer accept the results of our democracy unless they win. If we do not unite, we will be destroyed by these people, even though they are a sliver of a minority when it comes to the total percentage of the population. But the apathetic majority is watching, spellbound. You do not want your children and grandchildren living in a world in which it's okay to mock a woman who has been sexually assaulted. You do not want to live in that world yourself. 
the white evangelical Christian nationalist movement, the backbone of the MAGA movement, is the enemy of the United States. And they are far more deadly to our future than China or Putin or any outside force. They are the cancer within our body politic. Every single vote we cast, every activity we have on a local level needs to deal with this fact honestly. They have already done the worst they can do to us. There is nothing worse than coddling an arms industry that supplies mass murderers with weapons to shoot children. There is nothing worse than assaulting a woman, throwing her up against a wall and damaging her psychologically and physically for the rest of her life and then laughing at it. There is nothing worse than these people and they must be defeated. This cancer must be excised from our community. We still have the legal democratic means to do this. If we don't take action, now and draw the line we will have lost this battle for decency for the heart and soul of what it means to be a human being and the heart and soul of being a human being means we do not laugh at women who are assaulted we do not attack people and then laugh at their misery donald trump is a crude facsimile of a human who lost his soul many years ago they are following him down a rabbit hole from which there is no return. We can't go there with them. My name is Frank Schaefer.